The following. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. We're looking at the Dow up 61 at 36,551. We're looking also at an all-time high. An all-time high in leg C suggests, based on the Chapman Wave methodology of at least a peak D in a buy mode, uh, suggests that sometime over the next couple of days, we're going to get our peak C. Maybe that's tomorrow with some kind of a pullback, some profit taking, a very light volume day. And maybe Monday, Tuesday, boop, we pop up. And then we've got to assess to say, hey, do we remain long? Do we lighten up completely? Do we switch to the short side? What do we do? Well, Let's not worry about that at this particular moment. What we are looking at is um, the MACD is good. The stochastic is at 94%. And yet more than that, you can't ask for. That's fabulous action. What do you want? You want the stochastic to be flat and holding, and that means you can continue with the rally. You don't want to start, suddenly see a slide under 80%. That will be big, a big negative if it happens by Thursday of next week. Now, the unbalanced volume is the clue. You see this blue line here on the daily chart? For the next two days, today and tomorrow, I'm doing a lot of technical analysis just because so many people have said, hey, um, uh, we're not sure how you suddenly uh, managed to get that long side in the Dow. You've managed to pick uh, most of the turns this year. Um, uh, how come? All I can say is that I'm just following the Chapman Wave methodology. It's not always right, but when it's right, it gives us a nice big kicker and at least an opportunity to be in a position and then uh, any vic vicissitudes that occur after that, it means that you already, if you're able to get the two, you know, people mostly say, oh, if we can, can get the chunk of the move, we're, we're happy as a clam. I say, that's fine. I love that. But if you're able to get the outer limits on the short side or the long side, it means you've got a cushion because once it goes off that low, then any pullbacks, as long as that low holds, you're okay. So... It gives you this kind of not a, not a high comfortability, but some comfortability in saying, OK, do whatever you want now. I've got my position. Now I don't have to follow you every minute of the day. I can I can have a, a position where I can at least sleep at night because I, I know what my stop is. I guarantee that at least we, we, we can break even or make a profit or just let it run. Whichever way it's going to go. So in that particular instance, we're only looking at a C. Uh, the last move was a peak E, uh, sorry, peak F at 36,565, the all-time high of the 8th of November. Um, pulled back sharply to 34,022 uh, on the uh, 1st of, of December. Got a nice turnaround. So this is a very important moment. Why? Because I've been speaking about these so many stocks and indexes over the last, I, yeah, it's really hard to say because it's happened a few times. So when you look at the chart, you don't recognize that it had happened. But going back to um, March of last year, we saw that a lot of uh, stocks and issues that are tradable went from lows, from the highs that were made previously to the low that was made in March of 2020. That's where we went long on the day of the low, March the 23rd, um, and ran up to previous peaks on the left side and then had a pretty big pullback and then broke out to the upside again. So those are important numbers. So in this particular case, that high that was made at 36,565, we have gone above it and so far, look, with yesterday's close of 30, uh, 36,488, couldn't close above it. Today's young, but so far, 36,553, we're underneath that previous high. And you can see how those previous highs become some kind of a cap on the upside. Let's see what happens. I Believe me, I, if it goes high, we're not going to complain. Now, most importantly, this is a leg E in the weekly chart, but... There are times in the Chapman Wave methodology, I've always said this is not notational proof. Um, there's just no, no way you could ever have that. We're talking about, just think of human beings on earth and then think of stocks and the stock market. Generally speaking, 
you're looking at the same thing. You're talking about people with strength. You're talking about people with weakness. You're talking about people who have strength in certain areas and weakness in other areas. That's the market. What is the price point we're looking at? Dow up 62.08, no 61.88, no up 61.93. See how it changes um, at 36,550? That, that, I always think the market is a price point in a time freeze of human emotion. That's all it is at this particular point. It says that up 62 or 63, whatever it is, it has that uh, the force within it made up of all these people buying and selling and buying and selling and buying and selling has allowed it to move to this exact price point at this moment and that's all you can do. In fact, from this moment on is the future. Every single thing from looking back from this very second snap, that's the past. And look how quick we've gone from up 60 feet to up only 60. <laughs> so that's what we're looking at, a price point in time. And the price point in time says that in the Chapway methodology, there is just a chance, I, I'm not excluding it, that this isn't a leg E, that that peak that was made, we can even go back to the peak of 35,091 back in uh, May, June of last uh, of this year, that pullback in a three-wave move down is like an A, this is a lightning bolt. A to B equals C to D to the downside. That's where I started this up-channel mini uh, inside check propellant zone. That could be the start. Therefore, this is not really G slash C. This is an A. This is a B. And this is a C. Why do I say that? I mean, come on. What kind of methodology do you have if you can have floating notations here or alternate counts? Well, we have alternate counts because I don't have to worry about the weekly at this point because we're using the daily. And so far, the daily Dow is still very strong in all uh, in all uh, technical tools that we are using, except for one. And that's that the on-balance volume went from oversold to not yet even close to overbought. In fact, it's in the middle of the range. In fact, in the lower part of the range. And that's saying, wait, if the on-balance volume very often over the years in all the different indexes and stocks makes its high, look look at the weekly chart right there, made its high with the price high and made a low with the price low, um, what, 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 are we, what, what are the potential upside uh, actions? Well, that means that if the on-balance volume is going to get overbought, we could go maybe two weeks into January with higher highs. I don't want to exclude that. So now let's go back and say, now, if you if you know technical analysis, you know that there are many people that use the MACD or they use the stochastic. I've done this for years, since years ago when I read, what was it called, Day Trader, Jake uh, Bernstein? Way back, 40, I don't know how many years ago, um, I, I got his book. I've got it right there up on the shelf, uh, right next to Trade What You See. Uh, trade, uh, the art of timing the trade. Tom O'Brien, all my books up there. So um, that's where I started to move, use some of these indicators. Um, and I have found, let's just say you use the MACD. Well, the MACD, look at the price here in the Dow. You see this MACD, you see the way the arch formation coincided with the Doji candle high of the 8th of November, and then it pulled back sharply, and then it made an upturn, which corresponded to the market. Wait a minute, look at the weekly chart. The MACD is just making lower lows and lower highs. Ha! I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 71, SP's up 13, Basil Chapman. Take it, Technician's Hour. There's a lot to discuss here for 2022. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, 
educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, folks, if, if I'm going to be doing some technical analysis here, let me show you something. In the, uh, right here, in the one minute E-mini chart from the low that was made back at about 8.25 this morning, uh, it's the 30th, yep, um, there was a peak A, and then I used this little deflection right there to call this a phantom peak B, so I put it in red. Because everything about it said there could have been a pullback. You're trading in 25 cent increments, so there could have been a pullback. I like to be prepared. I like to be a little early. Uh, so this made a peak. Uh, it technically, would be a peak C, but I called it a peak D. Well, I'd be waiting for peak D, and it wouldn't have come because look, it it went from 47.92.75 down to the low at 9:01 this morning, Eastern Time of 47.88.25 and then started another peak A, peak B and then I used another phantom C because of the little hiccup in the technicals so I said yep you can do that legitimately in the Chapman wave without changing rules and then it went to a D and then it pulled back again from just about the same level 47.92.25 it goes down to the low of 9.31 as the market opened there was this dip in the futures and 47.86.25 and then there was this pattern that said oh Oh, look at that move. It went from that low in the 85 area to the 98s. It went up to 47.98 right there. And then it came back very sharply. And I call that Chapman Wave single leg a failure pattern, which says be careful because you can make an Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down look. Or it could be an uppercase A that goes straight up, straight down. And if it holds the left side low, that's a good sign. That could be the start of the new move. Well, it was. It went all the way from the, the 79 level down to the uh, 87, well, 48. 787.50 to be exact started a peak a pulls back makes another a remember you've got to count each peak and then it went b which was where a was before so that's a b c goes to a d doji candle and now at that same high the the rectangle formation that we had over here oh i thought i'd drawn it in i i i, I was thinking this and i forgot to actually draw it in 
Look at that rectangle. Look at that beautiful rectangle. How you go out of the rectangle, you come back into the rectangle. Those rectangles are so powerful. And now you've got this large rectangle in a in a gravy cup. That means it's a sharp pullback, making a curve, and then a, a higher a kind of stair step, higher highs and higher lows, move to that peak D doji candle, just about was a fractionally higher high than it was at that peak A minus. And now we're going to be pulling back again. And you can see buyers are coming in, choppy, choppy, choppy. I just wanted to show you on a, on a purely technical basis. After all, that's what I do here all year. And now I've done it just live. It's much better to see it that way. Have a look. So now the Dow has had a high today of 36,679. It's off the high, but it's still up 77. I would not be surprised if maybe tomorrow we get that peak C and then an early pop next week goes to D. And then I think we have to assess exactly what's going on. Why do I say that? Because if you're looking at the SPX.X, that's the uh, S&P 500, that went to, oh, finally, finally, 4808.38 is the high today. 42, I don't think I, I wrote that correctly. I did that on the fly yesterday. Yeah, that should have been 4807. I got the numbers mixed. 48702. So that was 40, 4807. Now what we've got is a new all-time high. Good. Now, this is going to be fascinating because why, what do we have here? We have a peak D, a doji, tiny little doji. Can you, can you imagine that? something trading in the 4800s? And it makes this tiny, tiny, after all these big candles, it has this little wimpy plus sign doji. It's called the doji candle. Hey, wait, where do we have those again? I remember seeing them um, previously, kind of maybe at tops. Oh, wait a minute. Right there, when we were checking the left side, right side price time match between 47.18.50 with the, the doji candle the following day, tiny little doji candle um, back on the 5th of November. And then we had a little bit of a pullback, and that pullback was down to the 46.30 level. So I'd say 70 points. That's, that's big. And then it runs up to a new all-time high of 47.43. Remember I said, I don't like what I'm seeing here because the left side had really good MACD, stochastic, on-balance volume, everything. Remember I, I said on-balance volume is a fantastic tool. You've got to know how to use it, though. I, I have webinars based on that. And what did it do? It gave you the exact it just the exact turnaround right there. And... Uh, when we went to the new high on the 22nd, on balance volume was a little lower. It was already dissipating in strength. The, uh, the stochastic went under 80% or just on 80%. The, the MACD, nine period moving average differential, was under the slow moving average. And look at the turn down from 47.43 to 44.95. I would say that that's a bit of a pullback. And then we got the, that lovely December 1st turnaround, and we went peak ABC, sharp pullback, and now we've gone to D with the, what little two doji candles, little tiny doji. So I'm saying well, let's be a little careful here uh, because the S&P has just made a leg E very quickly after D, and that's either going to be an instant restart, and it means that next week we have to start seeing 48 um, 48.15, 48.22, or if there's a pullback underneath, I would say 47.40. No, let's make it 47.50. 47.52. 47.52, time next week, it says, uh-oh, now you've got to be a little bit careful. We're about to have a digestive phase. So that's it. But the MACDs are really strong in the S&P, and the stochastic is 95% and flat. You're not going to get that turnaround. That's why I'm saying the alternate count says this is the this is the strict methodology of counting. But there's an alternate way of looking at it. Please be careful because the alternate way could kick in to be the primary source of notation. That's really what I'm saying. And I'm I'm just saying to you that I found years ago that if I was stubborn, if I was just locked in and I said, I don't care what the market says, um, I'm right. There's no such thing, remember, the market is always right. 
regardless of whether you're correspondingly correct or whether you are wrong, the market is right. So I'm just saying I'm using these tools. I'm using an alternate count at the moment. I am seeing some weakness in the MACD in the weekly chart of the S&P. I'm seeing 83% still good, but lower low. I'm making sorry to make lower highs and lower lows in the s and in the in the stochastic on balance volume is down from its d uh, double top that was that last high up at the 47 43 level on the 22nd of november so that's all but that monthly chart is in leg b and if the chapman wave notational uh, accuracy over all these thousands hundreds and hundreds of thousands of stocks is to suggest that a buy signal to a buy mode in the chapman wave invariably goes to a peak C and then a D, that's your objective. It can go higher, but your objective is a D. Then we are at this particular point only in this leg up. It's a floating ladder. It keeps moving to the right as long as you're making higher highs. It stops dead when you are when you pull back and make a peak, then it becomes a peak. And then once it breaks to the upside again, that starts new leg floating ladder C. We haven't got that then. Yeah, that's a hundred and seven is set with Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I had a question in the day. Yeah, Bowser is via NPC daily coming off the bottom of December the 20th. Thank you. So let me just say this. Uh, via uh, is, let me just check it out. It says here, yeah, via, via, via. <clears throat> 
Via Renewables company profile, Via Renewables, third quarter, I don't care about that. With customers' variety of products. Oh, wait, well, come on, tell me. Oh, natural gas, a retail natural gas and retail electricity. So um, let me just do this. The monthly chart is an A, B, C, made a peak D. It's stuck in a rectangle formation with the bias being higher, flat highs, but higher lows. And that means I can draw a rectangle in here and say it's working its way towards the 1250 level. It's at 1159. That's in the monthly chart. In a buy mode, has made a peak D, but still holding, consolidating sideways between, I, I'm just guessing right now, 1250, 1260, and uh, 9, say 30. All right? Uh, so that's that. Now we're looking at the um, weekly, and that low right there. Remember the chap wave, you try to identify the most obvious low, lowest low and you count each successively higher peak. Well, that's an A, but that's also an A, even though it's lower down, because your starting point is down here. And that's also an A, but it's actually higher than that, so it's a B. Why is that a B when you pull back sharply? Because this starting point right here on the fifth, the week of the 5th of uh, March at 9.38, that low of 9.44 on the week of the 7th of May is higher. So all of this counts peak A, yep, pulls back, but that's also an A, it's lower down. Therefore, every surpassing uh, uh, price point above that gets a notation. So that becomes gray B. Remember, it's still gray because we haven't got the MACD and stochastic confirming buy signals. Then it goes, it actually goes, this is really interesting, it goes to a C, and then only when it gets to a D, remember your objective is to get to a D, does the MACD cross positive and stochastic actually hold above 80%. On-balance volume is really weak. I, I have a lot of respect for on-balance volume. Then what does it do? It pulls back sharply. So I put a down arrow. I'm doing it historically. It's easy to do. And then I say, wait a minute. This V-shaped bottom on the on-balance volume is really good. That wasn't your question. I'm gi giving you a full answer because I like I liked the action here. I want to make a note of it as something to follow. I don't know if you buy it for subscribers, but at least it's interesting enough that I'd like to put it on my list. That's a gray A. It's still a gray B, even though there's a V-shaped pattern going back with VIA, VIA, trading $11.59 down a penny. And the MAGD tried to rally, it's failed. Stochastic tried to rally, it's failed. On balance volumes holding the other highs, and that's good. So all in all, I'm saying that the weekly chart now is looking very good. Um, as a trading pattern, doesn't mean to say it can't go lower. I'm just saying right now, this is still acting pretty well. Now we go to the daily. Oh, I have to go all the way back. I will right here. We'll do it live. Doji candle, two doji candles at the bottom. And that bottom is at $9.50, what, five cents? Nine dollars and sixty-seven cents. Let's type that in here. Nine sixty-seven, because I'm going to keep this chart. I like it. Nine sixty-seven, and then it goes peak A. Remember, count every single peak from that low. I can put the up arrow because of my visuals. Say, hey, this was definitely a buy mode that went to at least a D. But while we're going at it, I usually start off with a plus sign, and then I upgrade it once it starts to show the buy signal with the MACD and stochastic rallying, nine period crossing the four, uh, the fourteen period moving average. Then I, I, I consider it's in a buy mode going to at least a D. Well, lo and behold, goes C and a very quick D. You see what happens when you go very quickly from one letter to the other, unless it's an instant restart, going from a D to an E slash A, you can pull back. Well, you pull back to the 14 period moving average and start it again. Uh, a peak A underneath, a peak B, a peak C, a peak D, peak E, and a peak F. Very quick E to F. Says, oops, be a little careful. There could be a pullback. Well, there was a pullback. I didn't finish doing this. So this here gets the down arrow. This here gets the up arrow. Look how many peak Ds. Even if you just use the Chapman wave for peak Ds. Look how many Ds. And look at the beautiful declines you get from that. Uh, so this went to a D with a Chapman wave instant restart potential. Goes to an E, goes to an F. But look at the MACD turning down. Look at the stochastic. Look at the on balance volume. Beautiful turnaround right there at that E. And we turn around and it comes back sharply from the 12 point, uh, I'd say 22 ish area. And it pulls back to the where? The 200 period moving average. Tries to rally, it goes to peak A. 
and then it goes to peak. B, a big red line. There must have been news related. It pulls back sharply, breaks the 200 period moving average, makes a lower low. So the answer is no, it's not a leg. That's a B minus. There. A B minus because it made the arch formation, although it's an inverted V, has the same characteristic. Arch formation, dreaded H, goes to a lower low but closes nicely above. And that says if you get a buy signal, you can get a really sharp move. That means now you've got yourself a cup formation. I like this very much. I'm not saying that it's going to go all the way to the 1230s. Uh, it's 1159. But I think as a an, an minimum sideways action with slightly higher lows and slightly higher highs, that's kind of what I'm looking at here. Can I go to a buy up an up arrow and change it to a buy mode from a buy signal? Not yet. I need to. I need a little bit more evidence, but it's very close for me to, to move it to an up arrow, saying this should go to at least a peak D. Doesn't tell you how where D is. It just says higher highs. So the answer is, and we've got a question from uh, where where, where uh, a G Brew T in Tampa, Florida. So I'm just going to say to you. Um, I have more studying to do. No, no, no. You were you were absolutely correct. But what you missed was that that was the low. It isn't A, B, C. This lower low negates the buy signal that would have been appropriate right here from the low of 10.83. Remember, if you the starting point gets broken, you have to recount. Oh, uh, you meant V I A C. Oh, you meant VIAC. Well, that's okay, because now I've got something to watch. VIA is just something to watch. I'm going to circle it. Good. So you meant VIAC. Was that Viacom? Uh, Viacom. So, okay, so Viacom. I'm, I'm pleased you asked this question. You see, look how quickly we've gone from peak A to peak B to peak C and peak D. So that was your question. I'm going to, once again, um, you've got to count each successively higher peak. Look, here's your low, and VIAC trading right now at 30.95, up 95 cents. Uh, that was your low at 28.29 on the 20th. You were correct. That was the low. So this is your first peak right there on the 21st at 29.95. So let's call that peak A. But wait a minute. It pulls back a fraction, and then it goes to a B, and that's your B right there. And I don't like to see a very quick peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, because it says you're going to have another pullback, and that's going to be the test. It doesn't say you have to have a major sell signal. It just says be careful, because when you do it that quickly, you're kind of using up strength, and this high is just fractioning my eye saw it immediately. That high of 30.69 on the 23rd. Yes, you pull back 30.58, the higher of the next day. But look what happened, 30.67. 30, 30.69, oh, no, no, no. 36, you are correct. My eye was wrong. Oh, it must be that back eye. My eye is wrong. You are correct, absolutely correct. Congratulations. I should have made it slightly faster. Yes, peak C, that is good. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So, uh, you know, looking at it, thank you for the VIAC. I hardly ever look at Vi Viacom. I don't know why. I'm not just not into these, uh, uh, these media companies, but I am now because Comcast, I've been talking about this for a little while, had a really – I, when you come to the, uh, the cable uh, companies, it's kind of – it's really tough to look at and say in the next year, won't people be moving away from many of these if you have a really easy, especially you want our age group, the, the boomers and older, um, who, who it's not easy for us to make these changes. It's just, uh, yeah, just the way it is. Okay, our thumbs don't move as quickly as they should. Our minds probably, but our thumbs. So um, I'm always thinking, I, I want to cut the cable. I want to cut as much as I can. Why should I pay these costs when my, my kids tell me that they're paying minimal dollars and they're getting as much generated uh, data as they want? Um, and I'm up in the you know big big numbers. Yeah, I, I both have Comcast and I have Verizon as a backup. Um, so I'm looking, I'm saying, surely they're going to suffer from that, but maybe there's other things that are, are active, because this Comcast is a better chart than Viacom right now. Um, it, none, and all the others that pull back way sharp, but look at TNT, AT&T, a very nice move from 22 to 25. That's three points. That's what, uh, that's a 12, uh, three, uh, yeah, that's, that's um, what, 15% or something. So we've had a really big move. And now what we're looking at is uh, it's changed the characteristic of the weekly, uh, not the monthly, but the daily and weekly charts uh, up at 24.75 from the 22 low. So these things are starting to act very well. So going back to Viacom, that was your question. The only answer me about the, uh, the the notation. You're 100% correct. I thought this was a week. I'm, I just do this so much that I, I identify usually to the penny, even if it's a stock trading in the hundreds and hundreds. I miss this one. And it made a high of the uh, 23rd of December, Viacom, of 30.69, and was only 67 on the 28th. Uh, so that's 30.67. It was 69. It would have been a C, and that would have been a D. Then I would have said, gee, be careful. Not only that, this is one of the weaker charts of all of them uh, at the moment. You know, things can change, but right now it's at, uh, one of the weaker ones. All right, got that out the way. Let's do this. The TLT, could you please? Oh, I haven't finished all the other things, huh? Well, let's go to the TLT. The TLT has made a peak. Now, there's no way that I can count this other than that was the alternate count. 
and now I have to get rid of the C and say that was a peak E, sharp pullback from 151.77 back in November down to 144, seven points in, in, in a bond chart. <laughs> That's a lot. And then what happened is it had the, that move that went peak A, peak B, alternate count. I had this as an F, maybe a slash C, and it failed right there at 152.99. It made the dreaded H pattern. It took out the left side low, but it couldn't hold it. And then now it's broken down. It's gone under the 200 period moving average. And that says to me that you've got your double top here in the weekly chart, peak E at 152.72, peak uh, F slash B. This is another alternate count. It looks to me like this is going to be an F. And when I have that, I put the inverted I've already used up my down arrow. I've, I've, I haven't got to a D yet in the notation. Therefore, I've got there much quicker than I anticipated. So I put the inverted pink or red. Um, here we are. That inverted V-shaped pattern right, right there. The little hat. And that says that takes the place of a peak down arrow. And here, I'm going to have to think about this, and I'm almost sure I'm going to have to do it. I'm sure, but that's not yet the price point. I have to wait for the Friday's close. I have to wait for next Friday to see what's happening. And here we are at an alternate count, and leg B broke out of the monthly chart resistance, and it's back into that trend line. Now, I remember I, I'm, I have the thing about trend lines. The longer the time of a trend line, the more it's telling you but the less influence it could have. Now, what do I mean by that? It's telling me just on time alone, you would move sideways and out of this downtrend line in the monthly chart from 179.70, the all-time high back in March, not all-time high, the high of March in the monthly chart, peak D at uh, March the 20th. That's when the market made its low. That's when bonds made its high. And then what happened? It dropped sharply down to the 140, or what, about, what did I say, 133 area. And then it rallies. And it's just time alone takes it out of that trend line. What would be really important is for it to start to close sharply above so that I can say, wait a minute, I'm starting to get a Chapman Wave um, falling axe formation breakout with a potential one-to-one -to, -one to the upside so that bonds are going to go down, yields are going to go down as it's moving higher and it moves so that it goes by March of this coming year is maybe trading at the 163 area and yields are way lower. It's not happening right now. So trend lines are there as a piece of information. How you using them, how you use them is going to be really important. Most importantly to me is that we've got a sideways action. I'm I am going to this is what I show subscribers some opening call uh, every weekend. Uh, let me go right here, and this is kind of important. Uh, let's see where we are. I, I I will get since time. Let's see what that says. Uh, yeah, that is a vertical chart. If you're looking at uh, you're looking at the. Um, a GT in the S&P, uh, if you're looking at it, it, it ch choosing to do monthly or, 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 or a, um, a yearly chart. But at the same time, um, the importance of it is what's happening macroeconomically. And, you know, people are being forced into the stock market, and that's going to continue for a while. Look, look. Here's wood, the iShares, a global timber and forestry ETF. It's broken above the left side arch high. That's really important. And that's a good sign internationally because there's the timber and forestry um, uh, ETF global is moving higher. Not all-time high, 98.98, but it's a 91.69. That's a good action. And look, the housing market, Philadelphia Housing Index, this is darn good action when you think about uh, the worry that people have about inflation and prices of housing, etc. So far, that's good. And look, you've got a turnaround in yields to the upside again after the dreaded H failure pattern in the in the 30 year but look at the 10 year 10 year never even got close to the low didn't even get, it got to halfway of its of the interest rate of the 10 year yield between the uh, the lows of uh, earlier this year and mid midsummer now look at this the 5 year is acting even better so you're getting 
Look how close the yields are right here. Just at this particular moment, about four weeks ago, they were so close that you could understand why people would say, why on earth would I buy a 30-year when I can buy a 10-year for a little bit less, but with I don't take on the 30-year risk. It's just 10 years. So this is really important. I want you to show this chart to say, here's a trend line, and this trend line is going to become very important. It isn't yet. This is the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And all I can say is that for yields of the 30-year, anywhere between, ooh, 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 am I going to be able to read? Anywhere, anywhere between 2, that's 20.01 or 2.01, and what is it's going to be low for next month, next week. And 20.24, let's call it 2.03. And if it goes above that resistance, it's broken out. I'll be back in a moment to talk a little bit more about this. There's just a lot to look at. I'll be back in a moment. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, so let's just uh, continue with this. So we're looking at the high of the 29th of November in the TNX, that's a 10-year yield. And that was at 1565, so 1.565. They, they just do it in uh, counted, um, they, they add the zero. So we're trading yesterday at a high of 1558, 1.558. Pull back a little bit today. 
I suspect there will be a lag D because the MACD is strong stochastic at 77%. It looks like it wants to go towards 80%. So 16.65, can I say 16, uh, 15.65 will be the next level that I'd be looking at plus this jump wave inside uh, track, inside wedge target resistance line I, I don't want to take the time to do it now which says if it even if it goes above that watch out because if it crosses 15.73 ish 1.573 it starts to go right into that gap the gap that was huge that was from the 24th of november of 1693 and the next day the low oh sorry the high is 1543 that is a whopper so that's what I'm looking at. So, yeah, I, and when you look at the weekly chart, that was a peak DI. Do you have to put a down arrow? And that says we could be in a chop, chop, chop sideways range between maybe 16 and 1420 for a little while. Um, and the monthly chart says the same thing, holding the walking the 14 period moving average, nine period moving average, still holding OK. I drew this line and I forgot why I did it ages and ages ago. Oh, that, I drew this line in to say, look how often we've been here. This is 13.36 in the 10-year, uh, the low of July of 2016. Look at this. It's like a sine wave that keeps, it uses this as a trampoline bounce. Peak D pulls back. Peak D pulls back. Oh, my God. That's the end of the show. Oh, that's the end of the show. Well, we'll have to continue tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll do the news and then I'm out of here. So um, that was a quick hour. Oh my goodness. I, I would not be surprised if the dark closed even below it today. There's a little bit of.